on every relationship that you have. If you want to improve your relationship with your spouse, then you need to understand this one word. If you want to have a stronger relationship with your children, or children, you want to have a stronger relationship with your parents, then you will need to do what we're going to talk about this morning. Guys, if, if you want to get a girlfriend, you better understand what we're looking at today. It will change your life. And I'm not just using hyperbole. I'm not saying this for dramatic effect this morning. It is that important that you get this word and practice this word. And the word is listen. Listen. God calls us to be good listeners. It is an attribute of God. And the challenge is that we live in such a, a self-absorbed culture with so many distractions that few people are listening anymore. And that is the problem. The problem is people just aren't listening. I want you to hear me. I, I want you to understand me. Listen to what I have to say. I, I'm an authority on this subject. You need to listen to me. And people are just so quick. And you just watch conversations. Listen to conversations today. And people just can't wait to get their word in. Listen to what I have to say. Well, let me tell you about this time. Let me tell you. We, we, don't, we, we, we so don't listen that we're, you know, we're thinking about what we're going to say next while the other person is talking. We have to learn to listen. We have to love to listen. And we have to live to listen. When I say love to listen, I, I'm not saying you just love to listen to people. But when we listen to people, we are showing them that we love them, right? Can you imagine giving or receiving someone's undivided attention? Someone that is just cares so much about you, they are just fully present with every word that you are saying. They care. They're dialed in. They're not distracted. They're not looking at their phone. Becky and I went out to a Valentine's dinner this last week, and we sat down. We went to the Second City Bistro here in town, and our daughter Jessica had given us a gift certificate there, and so we went to have this meal, and when we sat down at the table, I took my phone and I slid it across the table. I said, hey, baby, put this in your purse. And what I was saying to Becky was, you have my undivided attention. I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm not going to be distracted because I love you, because I care about you. I want to listen to what you have to say. At one point, she got up to wash her hands and she came back to the table and she, she said something like, well, you didn't take your phone out, out of my purse, did you? I said, no, I didn't, baby. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> but the thing is, for, for Christmas, I got this watch. <laughs> it connects with my phone. <laughs> and, it, and it vibrates. <laughs> So, uh, but I didn't look at my watch. Well, maybe a couple times, but not when you were there, not when you were at the table. You know, the whole time we're having dinner and this, this thing's, don't look, don't look. You know, take a bite of steak, don't look, don't look at my watch, don't look at my watch. But you have to fight it, you know, think about this. I mean, we just live in a different culture. I, I don't know that people have ever been good listeners. You know, studies show that people just, they don't listen. They don't really listen. But we, if we want to have the character of God, if we want to have the attributes of Jesus Christ, we have to learn to listen. I want to play a little video that just demonstrates uh, the importance of listening. Watch this. And it just, uh, just illustrates, you know, how, how hard it is to listen and how dysfunctional we are uh, about this. But, but you know what? Uh, people long, 
People long for someone to care enough about them that they will not just hear what they have to say, they will listen to them empathetically, passionately. If you will do that, it can, I mean, I mean if you just choose to leave this place this morning and say, I'm going to hear God and be a better listener. I guarantee you it is going to bless your relationships in powerful, powerful ways. Because people are not listening anymore. People don't listen today. And God wants us to listen. You know, we've started kind of this new series. Didn't Brendan do a great job last week kicking off uh, this series on sowing seeds, right? And sowing seeds of restoration. And we're talking about coffee and conversations with the people on our prayer wall out there that we have been praying for. If you haven't put a name on that prayer wall, a prayer wall, I want you to do that today. We've been praying that God leads someone into your life that doesn't know Jesus Christ. That you can write there just their first name, put it on the prayer wall. And now we're, we're, we're kind of shifting towards coffee and conversations. That we could just, the people we've been praying for, invite them out for a cup of coffee. Not to tell them what they don't know. Not to preach about Jesus. The first way to sow seeds of restoration is to listen to them. Just listen. You don't have to say a word. Ask, ask a question, a good question, and just hear people. Because you love them and you care for them. It is like a drug. Listening is, is, is like a drug. People, they're desperate for it. The Word of God in James 1.19 says this, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Now, I don't know other places in the Bible where it says take notes, but that's what it says here. That's how important it is. Take notes. <laughs> I want you to write this down because this is so important. Because this is how you love people. So write this down. Be quick to listen. And slow to speak. That will bless your relationships in powerful ways. That will increase and expand your influence. Because people will want to be around you. Because you're showing that you love them. So there's things we need to be slow to do, right? We need to be slow to what? Slow to speak. Not slow speech, but slow to speak. Slow to give your advice. Slow to give your opinion. This is opposite of our culture today. Just walk into the market. Walk the neighborhoods. Everybody's ready just to jump in and interrupt. Slow to speak. Slow to become angry. Quick to listen. I'm sure you've heard that God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And what I think that means is we should listen twice as much as we speak. Just try that. Look what else this next verse says here. This is in Proverbs, right? The book of wisdom. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. Think about that. To answer before listening, that is foolishness. And it is actually shameful. In other words, God says, shame on you. You should never do that. We need to listen first. A false witness will perish, but a careful listener will testify successfully. That's using the court of law language there. You know, I will, you ever heard, there's a song out called, I Will Testify of Love. And we say, I want to testify of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to testify. I want to give my testimony, my testimony to testify. And, and that's good. But if you are not a careful listener first, then you will not be successful. Church, if we want to be successful at reaching people, at loving people, at growing and blessing our relationship, we will first learn to listen. And then the Bible says, then you will be able to be successful with your testimony. Kerry Clark was in a, a court this, this week. Kerry, come on up here if you can for just a moment. Do we have another mic we can bring up? 
Awesome. So Carrie was on jury duty, the dreaded jury duty, right? I know, everybody's wishing they were me right now. Yes. And she started sharing what the judge said to her. Could you talk a little bit about that? So it was interesting. Um, we're sitting in this room with 50 people, you know, sea of faces. The judge looks out at us and he says, there is a big difference between hearing and listening. And right. uh, he says, you are active participants of this trial. Your part is to listen, you know, and you can see everybody who's kind of was slumped, you know, sits, sits up and kind of leaning in a little bit and just whole body language yeah. changed. And yeah, so. good, good. And so, you know, I, what cracked me up was he said something about like how much people typically listen in a... The, well, and then deliberations, talking about de deliberations, 50% yeah. of the time, the jurors are talking about themselves in their experience to judge the case. Wow, you know, right. So so they're not listening during the trial when people's lives are on the line, right? They're not paying attention, then they go and deliberate and all they talk about is themselves. Yes. yes. Well, it helped, yeah. So it was we really are. <laughs> yeah, can, Carrie, can you just imagine, I mean, I don't know, you probably can't talk about your court case, but typically in, in the court of law, people's lives are on the line, people could go to jail, people could pay big fines. And so how important it is to listen. And we need a judge reminding people, look, you know, hey, I was thinking just about this, Carrie. People's lives are on the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we realize that, church? People's lives are on the line. And we need to listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. Thank you for sharing Thank that you. with us. Powerful. You know, Jesus was an amazing listener. Jesus listened to everyone. He cared so deeply for people. Um, there's one time, in fact, I think one of the few times we hear about Jesus before he started his ministry is when he was 12 years old and he was in the temple. Remember when Jesus was lost by his parents for three days, right? And he's in the, he's in the temple. They find Jesus and look at this verse here. But it says, this is 12 years old. When they did not find him, that's his parents, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers. And what was he doing? <coughs> Listening to them and asking good questions. From a very young age, Jesus, he listened, he listened, he listened to his father. He always listened to his father. He was praying to his father, but Jesus would listen to his father, which is interesting about prayer, isn't it? Because, you know, I don't know about you, but, but me sometimes, man, I'm just talking, 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 and I'm never listening to God. I expect an answer from God, but I never shut up to listen to God. Jesus listened to his father. Jesus listened to the lepers. Jesus listened to the broken, to the downtrodden. He listened to tax collectors. He listened to drunks. He listened to prostitutes. He listened to women. Remember the woman that was by the well? And Jesus comes and talks to her. And you know, in the time of Christ, women were not even second class citizens. In the culture of Jesus, women were, were looked down on and you didn't listen to women. There were things you didn't talk to about women. Jesus was radical with women. He cared what they had to say. He valued women. He died for women. He so loved women. And he's talking to this woman by the well. And they're talking about her past. And they're talking about church. And the apostles had gone on for food. And they come back. And the Bible says that they were surprised that Jesus was listening to a woman. They were shocked. Jesus knew how to listen. He listens to you. He listens to your cries for help. That is an attribute. Listening is this attribute of God. Look what the uh, Psalms say here. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from their troubles. 
in my distress, I called to the Lord and I cried to my God for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. God listens to every word, to every prayer, to every cry of your heart. God listens to you. God loves you. He shows you he loves you by listening to you. Can you imagine God? God, this holy, perfect, righteous, this God who is above all else, this God who created all that is good, all that is before us, this all-powerful, all-knowing, never-made-a-mistake God listens to the cries of your heart. He's listening to you this morning. He longs to hear from you. There's an interesting study that I looked at a few weeks ago about latest neurological study of the brain and, and, and how the brain acts when you are listening and, or when you're talking about yourself. Okay? When, when you're talking about yourself, the same activity part of your brain it is influenced as when you are doing drugs. Like if you are on meth or if you are on coke, it just overloads, you know, I think with, the, with dopamine, you know, this part, one little part of your brain that's the pleasure part of your brain. So when you're talking about yourself, it's just like drugs. It's just like eating food activates, when you're having good food, it activates the same part of the brain. And when you are talking about yourself, then that is like that drug, exact same area. 60% of the time, studies show people are talking about themselves. In social media, 80% of the time, people are talking about themselves. Even in the pictures of the things like Instagram and or, or words like from Twitter, people are crying out, will you notice me? Will you hear me? Will you listen to me? Everybody's favorite subject is themselves. You long to be listened to. You long to stand out in a crowd. You long to be noticed. So if you will love people enough to listen to them, you are going to have tremendous impact in their lives. Can you imagine someone doing that for you? And what we're saying is the people we're praying for, let's, let's hear. Hear what they have to say. Let's truly just put the phone down, put away all the distractions, and be fully present in someone's life. That, friends, is powerful. That is is life changing. That is what God is calling us to do. So as we begin by sowing seeds, we want to begin by listening. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to just have coffee and conversation with someone and, and just try to zip it. Look them in the eyes, smile, and let them know you love them with your ears, not your mouth. We're going to reflect for a little bit here. And I just want you to think of a person that is on the prayer wall right now. Or think of that person that God's put on your heart. And I want you to imagine them. Who is it? Who is it that you've been praying for? Or if it's not someone you've been praying for, who is it that God would like you to listen to in your life this week? Just think of that. I want you to see that person's face as we hear the words of this song, to be still, listen to God, because God's going to lead us in this. That's the thing, too. If we're listening to God, He's going to lead us to the people in our family, in the workplace, in the neighborhood. He will lead us to the people that he wants us to listen to. And that is going to be a transformative experience.
so let's reflect we're going to sing a song and then we'll have a video and we'll close